So, we've had a look at sort of the basic um, basic ideas behind titration and volumetric analysis and the, the basic calculations that we're going to be dealing with, but what we need to consider is the effect that any errors that we might make in a titration process are going to have on the end result. So when we conduct a titration, you know, we take we take a solution, we fill the pipette with this solution to a known level, so we get an exact volume of the solution, we put it in a conical flask, then we use a burette to drop another solution into the conical flask until the reaction occurs to, to completion, until we reach the equivalence point, okay? Now, it's important to remember that the unknown solution can be here or here, so the unknown solution can be here and the standard solution can be in the burette, or the standard solution could be in the pipette and the beaker here, with the unknown solution in the burette. Okay, both ways, uh, you know, both both ways will uh, have similar possible errors, similar errors that could uh, could occur. However, the effect of these errors are probably uh, going to vary depending on which way these are. So basically, I'll show you how to sort of step through the calculations that you have to do, or the thought process that we have to do when we're anal analyzing errors to figure out uh, what effect uh, these errors have on our calculations. So. Basically, the, the possible errors that we can make in a, in a titration. Uh, the first one is that if we don't dry the pipette. So, if this pipette is wet before we fill it up, then what's going to happen is the solution in the beaker is going to be diluted as we put it into the pipette. And so, basically, instead of, you know, say, for example, if this is a 10 milliliter pipette, what, we, what we're trying to do is add 10 milliliters of this solution to the pipette. However, if the inside of the pipette already has water in it, if, the, if its interior is wet, then we're effectively, well, we, we could, for example, be adding 9 milliliters of this solution from the beaker to the 1 milliliter of water in, uh, in, that's already on the inside of the pipette. So basically, we're going to have less mole of this solution. And if you think about it, if we have less mole of this solution in here, less mole in the conical flask, and therefore our titer is going to be smaller than it should have been. And that's going to have an effect on our calculations. Uh, on the other hand, this conical flask does not need to be wet, okay? This can be wet. Because, if we think about it, as I said before, then it's the number of mole in the conical flask that dictates the size of the titer. Here, because if this is wet, then we're going to have only, we might have, for example, only 9 milliliters of this solution going into the conical flask. However, if the conical flask, if the inside of the conical flask is already wet before we add this, that's not going to affect the number of mole of solution that's already in here. And that's what matters, the number of mole and the, and the 10 milliliters up here. So if we can calculate, say this is the unknown, and we calculate the number of mole of solution in here, then we're using the volume up here, we're using the 10 milliliter volume to calculate its concentration, using C equals N over V. And so this volume here is not significant. This volume is does not matter, and thus if we dilute the solution, if there's already some water in the conical flask before we add the solution from the pipette, then that's not going to matter. It's not going to change the number of mole in the beaker, and it's not going to change the volume that was added. If we use the 10 milliliter volume rather than the volume of solution in here, then this is all good. So basically the conical flask can be wet before we fill it, however the pipette cannot be wet before we fill it. Now another source of error somewhat obviously, is if we don't fill the pipette to the right level. If we f if we under or overfill the pipette, then we're going to have more or less than 10 milliliters of this solution. And again, that's going to affect the number of mole of solution that we have in these flasks, which will affect our final calculation for the concentration of the unknown solution, no matter, no matter which one of these, no matter whether the burette or the beaker contains the unknown solution. Either way, if we under or overfill the, the pipette, then it's... Then, uh, it will have sort of it will reduce the accuracy of our figures. Similarly, uh, another error here is if the burette is wet before we add the solution to it. So that's uh, again that's going to be diluting the solution, and that's going to mean that we're going to need. It's given that we need a certain number of mole to be dropped into the conical flask for the reaction to reach the equivalence point. The number of mole is constant, so. You know, for, for a reaction to reach equivalent point, there's a predetermined number of mole that needs to be dropped from the burette. And so if this is wet before we put it in, then the solution is going to be diluted and the titer is going to be bigger. In order, for, So if we want to use the burette to release a, a certain number of mole, then we're going to have to lose, re, release a larger volume of solution if this solution has been diluted. So if, if this is wet before we fill it, then basically our titer is going to be larger. So this can't be wet. And another problem, probably the last problem that we can reach, the last sort of source of error in this process here, 
is if we go past the equivalence point. <coughs> so if we reach the equivalence point and then we keep going, then that means our tie dart is going to be larger than it should be that it should have been, and that's going to have a serious effect on our concentrations. Okay, so that's why it's very important to make sure we drop the solution from the burette drop by drop. We don't just let it get, go a, one big, uh, fast-flowing, heavy stream. We let it go drop by drop to prevent, uh, to make to make it easier to stop exactly at the equivalence point. So we can stop quite quickly without uh, without letting too much more solution fly past once we've reached the equivalence point. So that's, that's a good reason to go drop by drop. So we're going to look at a couple of examples of how we go through error analysis. So error analysis is a pretty pretty major component of, uh, of titration. And so basically, when we're doing error analysis, we want to figure out the effect of a given error on the concentration that we ultimately find out. So basically, error analysis is all about comparing the calculated concentration with the actual concentration. So the calculated concentration is the figure that we obtain from a given experiment, and this may be this may be incorrect due to errors. So, so this the calculated concentration is affected by errors, whereas the actual concentration is you know the true value. So basically, we want to figure out you know if we do a titration all correctly then the calculated concentration will be equal to the actual concentration. However, if we're told, if, you know, we do a titration, then we realize, oh, you know, we stuffed this bit up. This was wet before we filled it. The pipette was wet before we filled it with solution. Then we can sort of go back and say, okay, well, is our calculated concentration going to be higher or lower than the actual concentration? Is it going to be higher or lower than it should have been? So we'll have a look at a couple of examples here. So in both of these examples, we've got the We've got our our uh, solution in the beaker and in the in the conical flask. We've got our aliquot in blue, and so we're going to call the aliquot is going to be the standard solution for this example, and the unknown solution is going to be in the burette. And so we've got two examples here. So the first one is we're going to say that. Uh, when we, we've done the titration, you know, we've, we've done all these processes, right? You know, this was dry, we filled it up to the right amount, all that sort of stuff. However, when we were doing the titration, we went slightly past the equivalence point. Okay, so we went past the equivalence point. So we've got our standard solution in the burette, we've got our, our pink standard solution in the burette, and basically we've been titrating that with the unknown, with the uh, standard solution. So we've got the Unknown solution. We've got the unknown solution up here. Maybe a mistake here. That should say unknown. So we've got an unknown solution up in the burette, and we're titrating it into an aliquot of standard solution, and we've gone past the equivalence point. So we've gone too far. So if we if we think about the effect that that has, then we're going to say that. The, 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 the volume of the titer, the titer volume, is going to be too big, okay? We've released a certain amount of solution from the burette, we've reached the equivalence point, and then we've released a gr more. So the, 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 the titer volume that we measure from the burette is going to be too big. So the titer volume is too big. And given that the, the, the solution, the aliquot, is a standard solution, and we've measured out its volume exactly, we know the exact number of mole in here. Okay, so we know the exact number of mole in there, given that this is a standard solution. And so for that reason, we know the, given that we know the, what the solutions are, we, we know the chemical equation for the, for the reaction between these two different solutions. And so we're going to be able to work out using stoichiometry the exact number of mole in the tighter that is going to be required to reach the equivalence point. So we already know the number of mole in titer. Okay, we already know the number of mole that's going to be in the titer even before we've done the titration because this is a standard solution and we and we know its volume. So therefore, using C equals N over V. Sorry, E C. Sorry, using N equals C V. We know C and we know V. And so we know the number of mole in here, and from that we use stoichiometry, we know the number of mole that's going to ne be needed from here to reach the equivalence point. So we already know the mole of unknown.
Okay, and so if our titer is too big, if our titer volume is too big, we know that concentration is given by N over V. Okay, and we already know the number of mole that's going to be in the titer, and so that error, so the so there's no error in that value. Going past the equivalence point is not going to cause an error in the value of the number of mole here. It's not going to change the number of mole that we put into this equation. However, if we go past the equivalence point and our titer is too big, then that means that the volume, the the the, uh, the figure, the measurement for volume that we put into this equation for C equals N over V is going to be too big. Okay, and if the not denominator is too big, then that means the uh, the value of the whole fraction, so that should be an arrow. If the denominator is too big, then the value of the whole fraction is going to be too small. And we know that this is the calculated concentration. So that means the calculated concentration is too small. So because our volume is bigger than it should be, our calculated concentration is smaller than it should be. So that means the calculated concentration is less than the actual concentration. And so that's the effect of going past the equivalence point. Now, if we have another example, so again, we've got standard solution in the aliquot and the unknown solution in the burette. And let's say, so let's say for example's sake that we have, we forget to dry our pipette. So we, we use a wet pipette, a pipette that's wet with water. Okay. And you know, for example, we might have one mil of water already on the inside. So we're only adding nine mil of solution. Okay. So we're diluting the standard solution before we put it into the uh, while we're putting it into the pipette. And so, as I said before, because we've got a standard solution in the aliquot, we can calculate the number of mole in this aliquot. However, if, for example, we have the one mil already in here of water, and we're only actually adding nine mils of this solution, then the then the our uh, then in reality the number of mole in the pipette is too small. Okay, so basically, uh, actually our calculation basically, so we've actually only got 9 mils worth of solution in here, but we think we've got 10 mils, okay? So what we think, we think that we've got more mole than we do. So the, our, 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 our value for the number of mole in the pipette is actually too big, my mistake. Okay, because we're all about comparing the calculated concentration to the actual concentration. So basically, the number of mole that we think we have, we think we have 10 mils of solution in here, and that, that, and so therefore, when we, so if we think we've got 10 mils of solution in the pipette, in reality, we only have 9 mils in, of solution in the pipette, and so therefore, uh, we think we've got more mole than we do. So our value for the n, for the number of mole in the pipette, is too big. Our 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 measured value, or the the number of mole that we think is in the pipette, is too big. We think there's more mole in the pipette than there actually is. Okay, and so that means that when we have, so then we, we do our titration, you know, and we use the equation again, C calculated is equal to N over V. Okay, now if, so we, you know, we've, uh, We've done our titration. We've reached the equivalence point. We've stopped, and so we've got it, we've got the right figure for the volume. You know, there's been no mistake in uh, calculate in uh, our measurement for the volume of solution from the burette in the titer. However, so we've reached the equivalence point. We haven't gone past it. However, in reaching the equivalence point, say in 10 mils of this solution, we have 10 moles. Okay, that's that's a slightly you know that's a very ridiculous figure. It's not realistic. However, let's just say, for example, sake, we have if we had actually 10 milliliters of this solution, then we would have 10 moles. Okay, so that means that if we are if we react here, so if we think we have 10 moles, then we think, and say it's a one-to-one -one reaction, then we think we've reacted 10 moles from the burette. However, in reality, there's only nine moles in here, so we've only reacted nine moles. For example, so for that reason, basically. Because the value for the number of mole that we think is in the pipette is too big, we think there's more mole in the pipette than there is. We think there's more mole in the aliquot than there actually is. We're going to think that there's more mole in the titer than there actually is. Okay, so this figure here is too big. 
okay, because stoichiometry relies on sort of a direct relationship. You know, if we if we've are uh, if our figure for the number of mole in here is too big, then we're going to think there's more mole in there tighter than there actually is, because uh, the number of mole that's reacting from the from the burette is gonna, is uh, directly proportional to the number of mole that's reacting in the aliquot. So basically, the value our value for the number of mole in the titer is going to be too big as a result of this uh, of this dilution. Our value for the number of mole in the titer is going to be is going to be bigger. Than what it actually than the actual value of mole in the titer, and so therefore, basically, this is our calculated number of mole N C, and so as a result, our calculated concentration is going to be too big. And so basically, that's sort of what error analysis is already all about. We have to sort of look look at the error, figure out its direct effect on you know on the you know, the amount of solution in the pipette in that example, or sort of figure out its immediate effect, you know, on it, on the, on, you know, on the piece of, on the exact piece of solution that we're dealing with at the time of the error. And then from there, from that immediate effect, we have to go through our cal the calculations that we're doing for the rest, for the rest of the titration, for the rest of the analysis, and see how that error, how that immediate effect is going to sort of uh, carry through our calculations and ultimately how it's going to affect our calculated value for the concentration. So that's kind of what error analysis is already all about. It's, uh, it's, it's all about following the effect of an error through a calculation to see how it's going to affect the end result. Okay, so it's all about comparing a calculated concentration that you've gotten, which has been affected by errors, with the actual concentration of the solution.